Good morning. We're Enbridge Consulting and today's webinar is all about an introduction to Unit 4 Recruitment, a powerful ATS solution. I'm Tracy Adams, I'm Sales and Marketing Manager for Enbridge Consulting and very shortly I'll be joined by Jeremy, Founder and Managing Director of HireServe, who will be taking you through a product demonstration. If you have any questions today, please pop them in your chat and we'll pick up as many of these as possible at the Q&A session later on. For those of you that have not uh, been on one of our webinars before, just to give you a, a bit of a background information about Enbridge Consulting, as you're probably aware, we're a Unit 4 partner and have been since 2015. We provide consultancy across all modules within the Unit 4 Business World application. We have accredited Unit 4 consultants and currently have over 50 consultants covering all the modules we have three offices. We have our office HQ in Kent, our Bristol City Centre office, which focuses on the managed ERP service, and also our Crawley office, who work with the e-learning solution. Okay, just to, to give you a very brief introduction of what we're going to cover today, we're going to have the introduction to, to Unit 4 Recruitment, a demonstration of the solution, an example of candidate experiences and then later on a, a Q&A session. So if you've got any questions throughout the, the presentation, please drop them into the chat box and we'll pick up as many of those as possible at the end of the session. So just a, a quick poll as to your reasons for joining us today. I know we have uh, a number of people joining us that already have the solution and how to improve their use of, of the solution. Um, but just pop in your, your chat why you're joining us today. Um, do you already have uh, an ATS solution? If not, is it something that is on your radar? So perhaps I'll, I'll give you a few seconds just to, to pop your uh, answers into the chat. Okay, so we're getting a, a few comments through now. You're about to implement a system. We've got people that do not currently have uh, a recruitment tool hence your, your interest in, in this webinar, thank you. You already use the, the system, but you're looking to update your knowledge. We've got, great, we, we've got a customer that is already implementing uh, the HR module and looking to implement HireServe at the same time. No system at the moment, so they're looking to implement um, a recruitment tool. Excellent. Well, we, we've got quite a few different people there from people that already use a system to those that do not have a system. So hopefully we're going to cover some of those areas that you'll be interested in. If there are any areas that we don't cover, then by all means, drop a quick note in, in the chat. And obviously we can pick those up at the, the Q&A session. OK, <clears throat> well, good morning, everybody. Um, um, <clears throat> I'm Jeremy. I'm from HireServe. Um, we are a specialist recruitment technology provider, been around for 20 years now, um, focused exclusively on developing, uh, supporting, <clears throat> and evolving recruitment technology to meet the needs of, you know, the the uh, the ever increasing demands of uh, of customers around recruitment, around efficiency, around exploitation of links to social media, and other online. Uh, providers of service, for example, uh, video interviewing, online assessment, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> We're constantly developing the product, um, and in the next quarter, we are going to release our first hiring manager app to enable um, uh, you know recruitment on the go for the busy uh, the busy executive. We've been um, involved with Unit Four now for um, you know quite some time. Um, it's, uh, it's around eight years with a number of joint customers. And we've, we've built integration between the two products. We've got Unit 4 Recruitment, which is the, the label that Unit 4 provides for the HireServe ATS. Unit 4 Recruitment is responsible for managing the process from initial vacancy requirement right through to bringing people into the organization. Unit 4 Business World clearly has its, um, its strengths around finance, HR and payroll. And the integrations that we've developed between the two enable the transfer of vacancy information from Unit 4 Business World into Unit 4 Recruitment and the transfer back of new hires, including documents um, and other information about candidates who have been hired into positions 
that information to flow seamlessly and automatically back into the business world HR system. As mentioned, you know, we, we are a specialist in recruitment technology. It's the only thing we do. And uh, this little snapshot here is, is really, you know, a few points of things, um, I guess, you know, things that we do do within the product. But there's so much more that we do that isn't listed here because the screen just wouldn't be big enough to accommodate all of the features uh, and functions that we offer. But <clears throat> it's a strong product that we're continually developing. The reason why we implement recruitment technology or pretty much any technology really is, is about saving time and money. And you know, there, there's the, 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 the tangibles, which are you know, actually saving money. Um, and then there are the intangibles, which are around giving candidates the best experience possible as they you know, attempt to engage with you as, a, as an employer through the recruitment process. Applicant tracking systems, it sounds a bit of a passive term, but we are collecting huge amounts of data from you know, your internal organization, as well as from applicants, as well as from you know, where these people are seeing jobs on the internet, how that's flowed through into your system, what journey people have taken. Colossal amounts of data and the ability to be able to report on that effectively is obviously a key thing, um, enabling organizations to make better spending decisions and better strategic decisions about how to recruit and where. Now, the, the main thing about these kind of webinars is that people want to see products. So um, you'd be glad to know that we're now 50% of the way through the slides and uh, we're now focusing on actually showing you what the system looks like. These are the three real examples of um, customer savings, which, uh, which, which these customers are happy to share. By implementing an automated reference collection facility, uh, the University of York reckoned that they had saved a, a, an entire uh, half an FTE, which is clearly a, a big cost saving in itself, generally through the automation of recruitment activity, Q measured that they had saved £16,000 a year just on start time savings within their HR and recruitment team. And these are, you know, kind of many, many organizations out there recognize already that, that there is a need to implement technology to streamline process. And perhaps they don't necessarily need to see the business cases, but some of these are quite compelling, particularly the third one, the Step Change Debt, Char Debt Charity, who saved a colossal amount of money um, just by switching to the process by which candidates are able to pick their own slots for interviews, as opposed to all the to and fro uh, to you know, agree a time with a candidate. And then one of the things that I'm going to demonstrate to you in a few minutes is, is the, the self-select capability. <clears throat> Focusing on three key areas, um, we, um, this is not going to be in depth. It's really just, it's, it's a touch on reporting and a particular aspect of it. A touch on, on, on assessment, which is, is where you can define the criteria by which you're going to assess your candidates. And finally, as, as mentioned a minute ago, about the self-select interview scheduling. So um, without further ado, I'm going to switch over to the <clears throat> browser for the first piece let's look at uh, let's look at reporting now within the unit for recruitment we have standard reports in the product um, like, like any product you know they have standard reports and we can see that uh, these are the recruitment product has within it a number of standard reports oftentimes standard reports are not um, what the end customer wants they want to build their own reports. So we also put in um, a re report building tool, enabling customers to be able to build their own reports as, uh, as indicated by the title. So this is an example um, of, a, of a report where I want to pull out information about um, the, uh, I suppose what you call it, E and D data, equality and diversity. Um, for people who have applied for jobs within a certain time period. So I've, I picked from, uh, from you know, by using my add column button, <coughs> excuse me, the, the columns that I want to include in my report. I'm then able to define um, unlimited filters to restrict the data. In this case, I've left the, the, the value blank, so it will ask me at runtime what data I'd like to use as the start of the report. And then it gives me various other options around um, how to combine the, the, uh, the filters um, and some other more advanced options, which I'm not going to go into in this, in, in this demonstration. But the key point here is that we are exposing within the report building tool, every field of candidate and job data in the system, as well as information about workflows, costs, um, and, and other related information 
if you add an application form field to ask somebody, for example, what is their favorite football team, then that information is something that can also be reported on. When we run a report, it's going to present me with an option to either um, enter the, um, either run the report now or to run it later. Uh, I will need to provide a start date for my report because that was defined as an open filter. So we'll just put a value in there sometime in the past, would be good. Um, and then the option to be able to run a report either now or later. If picking later, you can give it a description. The system will run it at the appointed time uh, and repeat on a frequency of your selection. I could have it daily. I could have it monthly on the 13th of the month at a particular time, having the report in my inbox. And what it will do is it will generate the report output into Excel, attach that to a branded email, which we popped into my in inbox on the appointed date and time. But we don't want to wait for the appointed date and time. We want to run the report right now. <clears throat> so we click the button, we run the report. The columns that I selected on the report definition are brought out to the screen. Actually, it's very straightforward. And this is um, a, a grid arrangement where there are 234 records returned in total. And I can page through the results, literally just using these, these buttons at the bottom. Now, if I want, I can put this information into Excel. I might do that, for example, if I wanted to perhaps share the results more widely or to um, do some kind of more in-depth analysis. Or it could be raw data that goes into some other system that's used for, for, for other purposes. Key thing here is what we've done here is we've generated out a, a line per candidate, um, including details of their nationality, their, their, the job function to which they applied. Let me just drop that one over there. Next to the job, I think would be a good place for it. Um, and we're putting out information about the gender and the sources from which they applied. With this, this is very flexible because we picked the columns on which we wanted to report, we picked the filters, uh, and now we can actually do some visualization. So this is where immediately within the product we can just look at. You know, get some insight into our data. So, um, um, <clears throat> you know, for example, I might just want to get a quick gender breakdown. I might pop my gender filter uh, field into the left hand side of the pivot table, and I might choose to generate a pie chart from that. Yeah, that's very simple, but it, it allows you to start to see information. Now, perhaps we want to analyze the um, the, the job functions um, that people are applying to and compare that, cross compare that to the gender. And maybe the pie chart may not be the best representation of that for me. So perhaps in that case, I might say, I'd like to present this just as a tab, uh, a, a pivot table. So we can pivot the data dynamically within the unit four recruitment application. And you can pivot to your heart's content. And utilizing um, some of the other options here with the heat map, for example, we can very quickly home in on the uh, want to dive in and see you know trends in the data using the heat map feature for example allows you to very quickly home in on where the highest values are so that's that's kind of my my, my summary on reporting I mean the, the point is that you are able to create reports using any columns you want easily get the data into for example Excel um, easily and dynamically visualize the information uh, you know in, in real time <clears throat> just on the fly from the browser. However, um, moving on, we, we, the, the next part of this is around assessment. So within the system, um, you can define for every job the criteria um, by which applications should be assessed. Now, many organizations have in the past you know, issued a, uh, like a, a, a matrix or checklist that goes with the application pack that's reviewed by managers, for example, asking them to, you know, put a kind of a, a one, two or a three, for example, into each, um, against each name for each candidate under a particular criteria, um, enabling effectively, you know, to have a record of what people think. We've taken that concept and we put it into the recruitment system so that now a, a manager, and in fact, multiple managers, because this can be shared across multiple managers. So you can define criteria against a job, uh, an unlimited number of criteria. You can build a, a library of criteria and then just pick and choose which are appropriate for the kind of job you're recruiting for. You can have one or multiple users simultaneously assessing the candidates against the criteria. And how that might look, for example, is if I open up the uh, Madeleine Emsworth, click on the assess. And this is um, a, a split level split level? Sounds like a description of a flat or something. It's a split screen enabling you to 
see on the right hand side the criteria against which we're assessing with a drop down of the uh, appropriate um, responses that a, can, that, a, that a manager can give. And on the left hand side, we're seeing the application form, or perhaps we're looking at the CV document for the candidate. We're looking for evidence as to the suitability of this candidate for the position that we're recruiting for. So what the manager will do, they can type in the various comments they wish to put in for the criteria, determine the degree to which met, exceeded, partly met. And this basis, by the way, is um, you know, user defined. We, by default, ship it with a, a four settings, kind of not met, partly met, met and exceeded. But you can, you can have a few or more if you choose and call them what you will. And the point is that the system will calculate um, the relative performance of that candidate against the criteria according to the information that's been put in by the user. With the result that you can have a, a star rated candidate. We can see that Boris Johnson apparently is the, the, the highest performing or most highly rated candidate in this particular example. By using the, um, the, this option here, we can actually see the details for the user of which, um, you know, who has assessed them for what criteria with how many stars and any comments that they might have added against them. So you see we're collecting a lot of information. We're also presenting it in a very uh, a consumable way. It's very friendly with the, with the star ratings and so on. In addition, uh, a user with, with appropriate privileges can look across all of the assessments made by all of the assessors against all of the candidates. So right here, we're now seeing the um, who has scored what and assessed by which users. And also you've got the number of assessors. Um, so we can say that we can see quite clearly that um, Harry Clark has been assessed by four people, which makes it a more rounded result than it would be, for example, if it was just assessed by one person who gave them three stars. So there's, there's, there's more that can be said about assessment uh, and about how you use the system to define the criteria and so on. Um, and clearly that information then becomes available within the reporting tool, enabling you to be able to search and filter on the candidates and how they have been assessed. So hopefully that gives you a feeling for what you might achieve in that area. Um, uh, the third item that it was suggested that we present to you was around interview scheduling. I'm just going to switch to another browser where I already have the tab open. Good stuff. And this is a, um, a fictitious career site that we, we, we mocked up and we decided to call it a university website. This is um, you know, the way that we chose to present the, 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 the vacancies being displayed on the page. So candidates will be able to look at information, um, potentially be able to see um, different pictures associated with different vacancies, all quite nice and contemporary. But the point of this particular part of the presentation was to show you how self-select interview bookings work. Um, essentially from a candidate point of view, they will be able to log into the system um, or in fact, I should step back slightly, which is that um, a manager within the system uh, in the back office where we were looking just now would be able to set a status against a candidate to say, for example, wish to interview. That can be the status set by a manager and that can trigger automatically the system to generate a notification to the candidate, inviting them to go to the website, log in and select their own interview slot from a set of slots that the manager has previously made available. So the candidate will receive the email message. They will click to log into the candidate portal of the relevant site. And in there, they will then be presented with the interview slots from which they're being asked to make a selection. They'll be able to select anything that's in the future. That makes sense. So I could say, well, in that case, I will book onto the 30th of September. Instantly booked. I've been now as a candidate will receive an email notification confirming that booking. The uh, manager will receive um, a, a calendar appointment in their email so they can stick it um, onto their Outlook or wherever it is, save that onto their calendar automatically. And um, everybody's happy because we've managed to book an interview with very, very little fuss. And what we find most often with this feature when it's being used is when we actually look behind the data to see what the candidate actions are, you could have maybe a dozen or 15 people being invited for interview. You can see what time the interview invitation was sent out. And then, you know, within minutes, you'll find that 50% of those interview slots have been booked. It's just done. And it's a, it's a really good way of doing it if it fits with your overall culture and the way you handle candidates. A candidate may then say, you know what, I've got to, you know, need to go to the dentist that morning. So they're able to 
release the slot, which makes it available for others, and then perhaps rebook it, another one. All taken care of automatically. So no need to bother the recruitment team with zero value administration. So that's kind of a, a whistle stop introduction to what we can do with reporting, what we can do with um, uh, assessment criteria, and how interview booking can be passed out to make it a self-service activity for your candidates. So th th there were a couple of things we wanted to show um, as well around the candidate experience, how you can present your vacancies to candidates. Firstly, through a fully properly branded careers website, making it um, consistent with your brand and your values, the culture of your organization. So all embedded within your, 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 your website. Secondly, <clears throat> when it comes to apply for can candidates to be able to apply for jobs, we can set things up so that you can ask um, you know, killer questions. Uh, it may be as simple as right to work, but it could be more, uh, more complex because it could be based around their experience. Um, and you might be asking people to identify whether they've worked in a particular sector before, before applying for this particular job. Um, and you can score the answers and, and perhaps give people a, a yes, no, or maybe, for example, being able to say to people, well, based on the answers you've given, you may not be as well qualified for the job, but please do apply anyway. So the various ways you can use it, either as kind of black and white binary, or as kind of, I guess, shades of gray. You can present options for candidates to apply using a, a means that, um, that suits them. What we're doing here is effectively, we're going to ask the candidate to complete an application form, an application form that you as the customer have defined to collect the information that's relevant to you. But we're giving candidates the ability to be able to pre-populate that application form from their LinkedIn profile or from their CV by simply attaching their CV, for example, and having the system extract what it can in terms of name, contact details, employer, job title, and dates. It's a quite good technology. We're using a product called Daxtra, which is well recognized uh, within the industry as a, as a, as a, as a high quality CV parsing tech. So it's all about making it easy for the candidates, making, allowing them to use information that they've already prepared to make the application process more straightforward. Another thing with the system is it's all about branded communication. So you want to communicate out to your candidates with a consistency and a, and a professional quality for everything, not plain text emails, but branded emails. Give people a nice button to press within their email to ask them to do something. In this case, it was um, you know, an example of the email that would have been generated to me to invite me to put myself onto an interview. We've just seen that, uh, that in, in real time being demonstrated. Another feature in the product enables you to be able to keep up to date with candidates around, um, for example, uh, interview reminders being generated either by email or in this case by SMS. It's, uh, it's a bi-directional SMS capability enabling you to be able to generate a message to a candidate and um, eliciting uh, or assisting, requesting a response saying yes or no or can I bring my mum or whatever it should be appropriate to the kind of message being sent. And that information is all generated by the ATS and the responses of the candidates are recorded in the ATS. Finally, of course, you know, that, um, that, that, that beautiful thing when you generate an offer out to a candidate, you know, how nice to be able to enable them to be able to click a button to accept their offer online. Um, we have many very, very happy customers. Um, we are very, very focused on customer service enabling, making ourselves accessible via live chat, the telephone, all based here in, uh, in Basingstoke in the UK. We also run clinics for support clinics, which is basically a free to attend. And there are many examples of that, uh, which is a testament really to the, uh, the kind of people that HireServe employs. Uh, finally, uh, find out more. If you want to find out about HireServe, you know where to go, unit4.com for details of um, the way the product is wrapped up as unit4 recruitment, or by all means, of course, drop me an email to jeremy at hireserve.com. Um, so I'm pretty much ready to hand back to Tracy now, uh, if you'd like to pick this up. Okay. 
And that was the, uh, the demonstration from Jeremy. We're just going to move on to the Q&A session. And um, we've already got a couple of questions coming through. Jeremy, I'll, I'm going to read out some of these questions and um, perhaps you could uh, go through them. Through. So we, we've got a question here from Tanya. Uh, can we customise our own form and add different questions on different positions? Yeah, and, the, and the short answer to that is yes, you can. Um, you can define as many different application forms as you choose to in the application, although a lot of organizations will choose to define a single form um, and then utilize a feature we call job specific questions, JSQs. Um, these allow you to specify for an ind individual job vacancy questions that should be asked of applicants during the application process, um, which are relevant just to that job. Um, and the answers to which can be automatically scored so you can get a ranked shortlist of, um, of applications. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. Um, now we've got a, another question. What are the minimum data requirements required in Unit 4 to make higher serve work? That's, um, that's, a, that's an interesting question, which I'm not entirely sure I understand. Um, essentially, higher serve, uh, you know, the, the, the recruitment technology, Will operate completely standalone from unit four anyway um you know business world uh isn't a prerequisite to implementing recruitment so um in terms of that that you know there are no minimum data requirements as such but um in terms of how you might um, utilize the integration between them then clearly there needs to be a certain amount of information that would flow from uh business world into the recruitment platform um, and, and that would typically be, you know, minimum stuff such as, you know, job title, reference number, position ID, um, you know, and some key information about location and salary ranges in all probability. But that is all extremely flexible and can be defined by the implementation consultant um, at the point of defining what the integration should look like. Okay. Uh Thank you, Jeremy. Um, are there any other questions out there? And um, did we answer your questions uh, fully, Tanya? I'll just give you a, a moment now just to um, to pop any other questions that you may have about the system, um, about any of the um, integrations, about the um, functionality. Um, excellent. So we, we've answered your question. That's great. And we have a, another question coming through now. Speaking about integrating with Aggresso, how long will it take? And I'm assuming that you probably mean if you've got Unit 4 already, which uh, I believe all of you have, how long would it take to, to get the higher serve uh, element up and running, the, the Unit 4 recruitment, Jeremy? Yeah, I guess this is, this is probably asking, isn't it, about the um, setting up the, the mapping um, that uh, you know that there needs to be created between the two bits of software. Um, so just to make this completely clear, there is a standard bit of product within Business World, which is the, the integration piece, um, which interacts with web services on the higher serve side. So it's standard product that already exists. The only um, the, the only time that is taken to, to perform the integration is actually the time it takes to uh, set out the mapping between the two systems and execute the tests. Um, I believe it's. Um, uh, I believe it's two or three days of effort, but I, I wouldn't like to confirm on that because, in fact, this is a piece of work that is typically undertaken by Unit 4 themselves. So uh, we, d we don't tend to see exactly what is involved, but it is standard functionality within the business world software suite, um, which just has to be configured. Perfect. Uh, I think that answers the question. We have a couple more questions coming through. Um, so on the application form, is it possible to actually use it as a screening tool? i.e. if you ask whether one has a permit to work in the UK, if they answer no, then they are not able to proceed with the application. Yes, that's absolutely um, completely possible. I mean, it's, it's, it's very common um, for customers to utilise this feature, which we call killer questions, which can comprise of one or multiple questions, which establish the suitability of the candidate to apply uh, from the outset. Thereby, the, the principle being that you are identifying and helping candidates to recognise whether or not they are actually eligible to apply. So it prevents you from getting applications in the database from people who simply are not 
you know, cannot be hired. For example, they don't have the right to work in the country in which they are, uh, you know, attempting to work. So um, the answer to the question um, is absolutely yes. Um, you can use it as screening questions in order to be able to prevent people from applying for positions. Excellent. A couple more questions coming through. These are coming through thick and fast. Thank you very much for that. Is the hire serve tool available as a software as a service or do we need to install it on our servers? And what is the cost model per, per user? Yeah, um, so the, uh, we do provide it on premise for a limited number of customers, but the, the, the most popular model is the software as a service um, where we're running around about 80 customers now. Um, the pricing model is based on the size of the company who is implementing the product. So if you're a thousand, uh, you know, a thousand employees, then that equates to a certain annual license fee for the SaaS model. Okay. And I think obviously if that's of interest, um, we can obviously take that offline and, and have a chat with you directly with regard to pricing um, for particular customers. So uh, again, um, Tanya, we could perhaps pick that up after the, the webinar without a problem, uh, go into a little bit more detail than perhaps what the, the, the webinar covers. We've got another question here. Uh, before we post a vacancy, we need it to be approved. Do we need to maintain a separate approval structure in HireServe or can we do can we use a unit for workflow within HireServe? The, um, the, the, the both options exist in fact um, depending upon whether you are implementing integration between the systems um, you can implement the approval workflows within the HireServe part itself uh, it doesn't have to utilize the same approval structures as exist in unit 4 uh, which is a kind of a, a because it's actually a lot more flexible in that respect. But um, yeah, in, in simple terms, you know, the short answer is if you want to do it within the recruitment product, HireServe, you do need to implement your own approval structures separately to those which are in within the business world. However, if you are um, you know utilizing it in an integrated way, many customers are opting to implement the approval processes within business world itself and then pass through um, a you know functionally approved vacancy uh, automatically from business world into higher serve such that um, it can simply be checked and uh, approved for publication to the website within higher serve okay thank you then a couple more questions uh, are you or will you be gdpr compliant let me answer that one um, we, we we certainly are and will continue to be so uh, the key thing here is about um, understanding the legal basis um, and, and associated regulations about what information can be collected from candidates and how it will be used and ensuring that the candidates have their, their rights respected and they're able to exercise their rights with regard to uh, understanding how the user is to be, how the data is to be used and how they may uh, uh, choose to, to have their data removed from the system and so on. We have uh, a number of papers on this matter on the HireServe website, hireserve.com, uh, where there's an awful lot of work that we've done with um, Osborne Clark, uh, a law firm, to uh, create a, you know, a set of guidance notes for people within the recruitment business. Excellent. And we've got a final question by the looks of it. Is it possible to share application within the system with panel members of the selection? Sure, it's extremely common to implement the system with um, uh, selection panels. So that's, you know, you may have a hiring manager, but um, there may be multiple people involved in the uh, in reviewing the applications or in the interview processes. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. The system supports very flexible methods of sharing the application data. That would be CV documents, application forms, video interviews, whatever else other data that's relevant to the application can be shared easily with all panels. Excellent. Well, I think um, we, that draws our questions to, to a close. Uh, if there's any more, please do um, pop them across. I'm just going to pop a short survey monkey questionnaire um, into the, the, the chat box. If you could just take a, a note and give this a, a click, it will take you through to some questions um, just about the webinar, the feedback, um, if you've got any additional areas that you'd like to cover in future webinars, again, please mention those in that SurveyMonkey uh, questionnaire. It just helps us to build 
better webinars. I'd like to say thank you very much to Jeremy um, for taking part in, in the webinar and answering those questions for us. I'd like to, to thank all the attendees for, for coming. If there are any further questions that you have, please feel free to contact me offline. But otherwise, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Jeremy. And uh, we look forward to you joining us on a, a further webinar in the near future. Thank you. Thanks, thank you, Tracy. Goodbye. Goodbye.